very, very quickly for us, very helpfully. So, we have Will Hall and Boris. He's on camera, everyone. Everyone coming from his Twitter. He's on. And we have Joe on what looks like Merfolk to me. Not yep. much else to play Silver Guild Adept. Yeah, it is. We're going to probably have Ben Jones come join us um, shortly. Very exciting. Um, ben Jones, multiple pro tour playing once G GP Barcelona? What was that? Yeah. They won a GP when it was Team Trios. Um, join us soon. So Will is on Amur. How... how uh, there's still debates out there just to sort of give chat an, an update of how this sort of like works like everyone's trying to work out their math the how, how, how their breakers will go yeah the pairings are real weird so we have six players at two one and one and then, and then there's it's just weird very very weird all across the board and um what we'll do is uh, we'll let this game play out and after this game we'll do our magic online giveaway so uh if you're not already following, you'll need to be followed for this giveaway. Um, 120 play points coming your way, coming away. And the, and it's it all chat about the plus point of uh, all of Will's car is out. So even if he loses, he's got his car. His car will be happy. Okay. Let's get into it. Well, just deciding what two drop to play here. It looks like the choices are Johnny or Amptraptor. So Amptraptor being played. Going up to four energy. Flipping an Ocelot Pride. It's not bad. Pretty good against a you bunch of two ones. You take that. You take that. Elegant Parlor. Surveilling one. Aether Hub into the graveyard. So, Aether Vile is going to be ticking up to one. So, I can see Sink into Stupor. What else is there? A whole bunch of blue cards, basically. Joe, obviously, a long time Merfolk player. Lots of foils and alt arts in there. I think I can see a flare of denial as well. Um, have you looked at the stats on this uh, matchup? Is it um, fairly even or is it lopsided? I can't imagine it's that good for Merfolk, but it's there's not a huge amount of data for Merfolk online, to be honest. Yeah, like because pretty much Neo Two wins with it, and that's pretty much all all we see, right? Let's have a little look see. So Merfolk. And a gear. It's not good for Merfolk. About 25% by the looks. So, Harbinger of the Seas played out. Not its best matchup, to be honest. The Silvergill ran into the Amped Raptor. I think the first strike may have been missed on the attack. So, Goblin Bombardment played out. That is going to be quite nice against the creature deck yeah uh so. do you have to try and flare it is that a flare no oh oh so they're flashing that in to flare it that i, I think yeah, will they vialed in a tide shaper to flare of denial though. i think will takes that though probably yeah uh, johnny played out as the follow-up is quite a lot of pressure quite quickly so a lot of damage coming in Harbinger of the Seas has no good blocks. The Amptraptors both eat it. It does get the Ocelot Pride, but then that flips the Ajani, and then the Ajani kills the Harbinger anyway. So we can we can start seeing why it's on the rougher end of things for Merfolk here, where Boris's cards are just two for ones, all of them basically. Where Amptraptors are two for one, Ocelot Pride is more than one. Even got the city's blessing off the token as well, so doubled up the two one off the Ajani and got two one ones off oh. of itself connecting. And will showcasing their brand new cats. Yeah, 
Yeah, the weird milk cat. <laughs> I do need to ask him for one of them, actually. I want to force it into Jenny's. Into Jenny's rotation. Yeah, 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 into, yeah. into Jenny's little token box. Yeah, the one, one, two, one cats. If you if you see where we will uh, trade up, if you trade up his uh, on his challenge that he's trying to trade up into a um, black lotus from I think was a basic land. I, I can't remember exactly where they started. Where's he at now? Oh, very well off. <laughs> I believe he's a, he's got a, he's a, he's got about a grand's worth of cards at the moment. A basic island is started at. Yeah, shout out to that. It's incredible. to two let's see what joe can pull out of the bag here i hasten to say that joe is dead but it's not looking great for them i know it's um it's a little bit rough because the, the the merfolk blockers aren't great right Bleach. and will's will is co like correctly like fetched around sinking stupid flage so we've denied that for a turn Will's just going to be crashing in for so much here, though. We'll ju we'll just we'll just go six, eight, ten. That's a lot of damage. It certainly is. And Joe conceding. Well, that was Boris doing Boris things, and Merfolk not really doing its thing. So they now <laughs> offer the draw. <laughs> <laughs> I think Will would still take it. I know that sounds like... Uh, I have no idea. The, the intricacies of uh, competitive magic that is impressive. It's, uh... oh, the, the people that can read standings and make sense of it, they, they may as well be speaking Arabic yeah. to me. On that note, let me go see if uh, Ben Jones is around. See if he's go ready for to it. come in. Not sure on here. Is the Macy Harbinger of the Seas come out on the Merfolk side? I don't know if we see Blood Moon come out on the Boros Energy side. Merfolk plays a lot of non basic lands and they can afford to play Harbinger into it because all of their lands still then tapped for blue. Whereas Harbinger isn't as impressive into the Boros deck where they will very often fetch basics around it and they can still play through it as we saw in that game one where the Harbinger came down and Will was just playing cards through it with ease. But Blood Moon is still not the easiest thing in the world for Merfolk to deal with. We have Ben Jones coming in as well. GP champion, multiple Pro Tour competitor, yeah, one of the most one of the most quietly spoken men I know. So put, yeah, putting you in front of a microphone is always going to be good fun. Grixis yeah. Death Shadow enthusiast. Yeah. Big blue fun. black blue black Merc Tide enthusiast. Now. Yeah, it's basically the same deck, yeah. but in 2024. <laughs> but it plays it plays good cards instead of Death Shadow. Exactly. Street Rage, yeah. And Team of Battle Rage. Yeah. All of these things that I wish were still playable. You could team a Battle Rage on Merktide. Team a Battle Rage on my Psychic Frog would be oh, pretty good. Now we're cooking. So, you ID'd. Yes. Locked? Uh, yeah, so because Will and his opponent's name, which I can't remember. Joe. Joe ID'd. That means it's going to be a clean cut. Oh, it's on the screen. I probably could have seen that. They are playing. Yes. <laughs> so, six players at 2 one one yeah. Doesn't make it easiest. You are. I, I just spoke about these wizards that can read standings and actually make sense of them. Yeah. You are one of those people. Yeah. Where you can read standings and you look at it and it makes sense to you. And you're normally the person I ask if I, on the rare occasion that I'm doing well in one of these things, I go, Can I OD? Yeah. And you normally turn around and go, No, your breakers are crap. You have to play. I lose and then I finish ninth. Mm -hmm. That's normally what happens. So, Blue Black Merc Tide today? Yeah, yeah, it's a, a very good deck. 
Uh, so I'm playing two Cling to Dust. The card main board I... or sideboard? Two in the main board. Whoa! Okay. Because I've just found it's a very good answer to Flage. And even if they're not a Flage deck, it's just a cantrip. Yeah, the worst thing it does um, is take a thing away and draws your yeah, card, right, for a black, so... Exactly, and Flage is kind of a problem card for the deck, so getting to just free roll an answer to that has been great. I imagine it's not even necessarily the three damage on the ETB, it's the recurrent threat out of the graveyard. Exactly, yeah. Any consideration for a surgical? Anything like that? Yeah, so I'm playing two surgicals in the sideboard. Um, but That's for Nard Nardu and Flage and all of these sorts of things, right? mostly for Flage. Okay. Um, Nardu, I think sometimes you can lose to the creature draws more like Spring Heart and Urza's Saga. And you have loads of interaction for Nardu anyway. Okay. But just being able to exile stuff like Attractor versus Gorios and getting Flage out the game. Is that, is that a Lord of Atlantis on Joe's side? Joe, obviously a long-time merfolk player, as it's nothing but promos and foils. Ooh, so nice. some of them are on the harder end to identify. Just making your job uh, Oh, it's so much fun, honestly. It's trying to identify all the cards and all the weird versions, like secret layers and everything like that, that are being played. So, yeah. Elegant Parlor as well. What do you what do you reckon? Have you ever played Mer Merfolk at all? I have not. <laughs> no? Ne no? Never never swung that particular never way? Never played Merfolk. Never been an Aether Vile gamer? No. Do you prefer your cards actually do something? Legacy, okay, okay. Not Merfolk. So that's the closest thing yeah. you've got to an Aether Vile deck. yeah. Aether Vile's not really my speed. I prefer, you know, playing spells. <laughs> Have you played Boros Energy at all? I've played a little bit of it. Is that um, on Moto? Yeah. So I played some of the earlier versions where you were playing pretty much far too many two drops. So you had Unstable Amulet, you had Ajani, you had Raptor, and you had Felia. Yeah. So when I played it, the deck just felt too clunky. And then the next league, I picked up Nardu, and that deck's very good. <laughs> So yeah. I didn't really touch it after that. And then you played it in the Mega Modern and sold it that weekend. Yes. <laughs> sold it before the band's going to hit it. So, Master of the Pearl Trident. That is another lord that gives Island Walk, I want to say? Yeah. They're all pretty much Yeah, the they're same. all basically the same card, right? But that is a lightning bolt. I recognise that from our previous stream with Will. He's playing the Hadouken <laughs> Street Fighter lightning bolt. Nice. As I said, making it very, very easy for us to identify. So, well, I would not have known that was a lightning bolt. That is my food. That is your food. That's fine. You can shoot yeah. off. So go, right. go get your rest. We'll see you in the top eight. See you later. Best of luck for the top eight, mate. Thank you. Perennial winner. I hope you all enjoy these little interludes that we have with some of the players in the room. We try and get people in, get eyes from the floor, see what's going on. This matchup is, as we said previously, a little bit lopsided. So, four mana available for Joe. Let's see. Another Merfolk Master of the Pearl Trident. And no other drop. So, that is a Mutavolt underneath that island. So, that might be, see what... What we see booted up. Dave is returning to us now, but he's wandering around like he's busy. So I'm not going to try and corral him just yet. Oh, no, he's sitting down. Excitement. No, I'm, I'm just um, keeping an eye on the floor, keeping an eye on, like, drops. And um, shout out, oh, cat, random cat token in my... <laughs> in my uh, A mashed 2-1 cat warrior. I probably, like, lost 200% of financial MTG finance value there. Um... Was it a foil like seventeen quid or something? The one one, the one one foil, because that's the one that Ocelot Pride makes. The card that I think can be busted in the long term outside of a Jari deck. White Ragavan. Yeah, um, is bonkers. Um, what do you reckon, chat? Ocelot Pride, White Ragavan. Looks like Will's winning this, right? Should be. Yeah, I'd be surprised. So, Will breaking out every single Will Hall token that he can muster here. <laughs> he's got the adventure, he's got the treasure, he's got the 2-1 Cat Warrior. We need to see as an Ocelot Pride now. So, Gavanic Discharge, move in the Mute Vault out of the way. So, Will has essentially drawn five removal spells and two threats. 
killed everything Joe's played and is just cracking in over and over again. Has roughly a billion mana available thanks to these Ragavan treasure tokens. Guide of Souls being played out as well. And that looked like a static prison in hand, so I cannot see Joe doing all that much here. No, and um, Joe might, like, the latest the latest rumblings I have her for is that we reckon there'll be one, three, and two who gets in because of the way that everyone. If Joe played. loses us and still makes it, that'll be quite exciting. Foil Old Border Svalen. Me and Ben had a quick chat about all the different arts and promos that are being used. Will played a lightning bolt, and even Ben didn't identify it as a lightning bolt. <laughs> Luckily, I have previously commentated over Will, so I know that he plays Hadouken. The Hadouken lightning bolt. Yes, we've seen that. You've never sounded more Welsh. Hadouken, but... <laughs> I, I... More energy available. Why I was... Something. Why I was gone for so long relevant to you actually couldn't find any modern horizon boosters in the whole store uh oh that's how popular it's been and sold so turns out when you print very powerful cards hadouken but <laughs> yeah yeah it is hadouken in it well that's nearly somerset aldouken <laughs> aldouken <laughs> oh, big time that's what bristolians say when they get to the pub isn't it how do can in it? How do can? How do? Ah. Will's in a phenomenally good shape here. Yes. I think this is. I love. I love it. Yeah. It's it's kind of not. It is the man's um smashed it. He can't stop winning, can he? This store's good juju for him. 